So yesterday in Johann's uh, WordPress forms, um, actually in, in this session, I will just demonstrate th the same thing using different technologies. So what Johann uh, showcased was using WordPress to create a web form and uh, using Claris Connect to write the data into FileMaker. So that's the same thing. Uh, what I'm going to show, but instead of using WordPress, I'm, I'm using uh, Rapid Weaver. I'm not associated with Rapid Weaver. This is not the marketing for Rapid Weaver. I just use it for, uh, I, I have been using it for 10 years now, and it's, uh, it's really very close to FileMaker when it comes to uh, web development. I'm not a web developer, but I had some uh, cases that I need to create some very uh, uh, small websites. So let's get started. Uh, I liked, how do you do that? Uh, yeah, somebody noted that, I didn't know. So why use Rapid Weaver? So uh, when you have, uh, you need a web form and you need to uh, be able to uh, provide that to external users and you don't want web direct you would go with something uh, like a web form and data api the problem is that using a web form requires uh, uh, wordpress or maybe a service like jotform i have integrations with jotform but i didn't like it I, I didn't like depending on the service and I didn't like having WordPress administra administrators to do all the updates because I know that if I click that update, maybe everything breaks. I've seen that happening, so I don't want to have that switch. I'm a FileMaker developer, so I have no idea what an update in WordPress can break. And this is why I noted to Johan yesterday that I'm doing it using a, a different tool that works only in the front end. So there are two parts and uh, a middle map. The first part is the web form, which is a front end, can be, can be just a front end. The back end is of course FileMaker and the middle man in the demo uh, today will be uh, Integromat. So why, do, why did I do that? I'm not always using that. I'm not saying that uh, uh, going that course, it's the best action. I'm just saying that in, there are use cases that this may be the best course of action. If your client has already a WordPress website, then you would probably don't want to use that tool. If your client has already a web developer, you may want to give that web form to the web developer, or you may not. So in this session, I'm, I'm just uh, demonstrate that and explain that I'm using for uh, low budget clients and uh, they may not have or may, or may have a custom website. So changing it uh, requires a lot of communi communication between uh, uh, me and uh, web developers, and uh, they need to understand how the data API works. And uh, they some down the line they will say, I, I want that result, and you will say, ah, I cannot handle the result. Another use case is that your client has already a website, but is a static website, it's just a presentation website, and uh, the server is pretty minimal, so it's a low specs server. There's no need to have an engine like WordPress to do things. And the reason I really like, like and enjoy working with that tool is because it's, it feels like FileMaker. So how do you do it? Um, I, I already talked about it. So the front end is, uh, uh, is made using Rapid Weaver. And uh, the API I'm going to demonstrate now is Integromat. The reason why Integromat, I like Integromat is because of the user interface. It can provide uh, uh, a result 
in contrast to Zapier, I, I didn't have the opportunity to use Claris Connect yet. And uh, the free tier offers, I believe, two, uh, the, two workflows. And I believe there is no quota in data, just how many uh, steps your flow can have. So there are some dependencies. Uh, you need the Rapid Weaver. Uh, Rapid Weaver is a Mac only um, application. It's been around Mac for uh, more than a decade, and uh, it's uh, right here. So to use the form that I'm going to showcase, you also need a plugin. It's a uh, it's a plugin that it's the mother of plugins. It's called Stacks, and every uh, Rapid, every plugin for Rapid Weaver is built on the Stacks plugin because they made it very easy to uh, develop things. The form snap stack, it's actually what's creating the, the, the form and Integromat. So let's create a demo. I will, create, I will start from scratch. Uh, your web page needs to be uh, on the Stacks plugin. I just said it's the mother of plugins. And uh, let's create our web form. Uh, those phases get in the way. Okay. So let's uh, write a header. Okay, let's say dot .fmp, fmp apply. I will say that's a header one. Okay. And then uh, I'll go minimal. Just this is the, the container for uh, the, the form to operate. And uh, I will start uh, putting some fields there. So uh, let's, I have already created a mockup, so I will just replicate it. I will uh, add a, an input field. And I can say that uh, I need your first name. And uh, this is actually how you would like your uh, key to be uh, named. So in the JSON that this uh, plugin will provide, you can handle what kind of keys your JSON will be applied for that value entered by the user. So I like to go uh, top to down, so I, it would be named first. And then another input field, and uh, I will call that just last name, and my field name will be name last. And then uh, I just created a, a, a message so pretty simple, uh, and that's it. Let's view it, and not, and this comes up. So one more thing, uh, you can select a theme. By selecting a theme, you can. There are uh, built already built templates that you can buy, or there are for free. And uh, you can also, if you are uh, fluent using web development, you can write your own CSS code. And uh, here in the, in the code section, you can customize however you need those parts. So for our example, I'm just going to use a free theme, which is a clean slate, and it's the foundation. So that's it, pretty simple. So let's, uh, let's go to Integromat. So this is my form, but I need somehow to connect it to FileMaker. So let's go. I have created a .fmp environment. And uh, this is the one I, I, I will be using. And uh, in order to play around, I have created this uh, .fmp showcase scenario. This is how they call it, uh, how they call the workflows in Integromat. So as I uh, mentioned before, the reason I like Integromat is that uh, you can have a response. So 
this this plugin in Rapid Weaver if if there, if no response is uh, gotten back, it assumes that is an error. So the response needs to be status okay, and this is why uh, in this use case Integromat works best. So I'm using a webhook, just like Johan showcased. With, uh, you can create named webhooks, and uh, this is the webhook you need. And you can also, uh, if you are not, so one parenthesis, when I, when I, I will host that web form, uh, a very small detail that only uh, uh, web developers can uh, really work around is you need the allow origin. So what allow origin is, is uh, in the HT access, there is an HT access file, I cannot access it from here. Uh, there is an, a dot HT access in your website that specifies whether your website can create calls to another URL. And this is the, uh, the cross origin uh, calls. And uh, if, you, if you don't know how to change that, uh, but I must say it's pretty simple, you can also use, or maybe your use case is uh, something else. They also had a custom mail hook. I really like this, uh, uh, this uh, part of Integromat. You can create a custom mail hook and when uh, an email arrives in this uh, uh, workflow, it will trigger the whole thing. So I think this is something interesting. So I created my webhook here. Uh, my web form will call that webhook, and then it will it will log in. So I will not go uh, into detail. So it's using the sessions uh, method of the data API. I'm still using version one, <laughs> and uh, it's a post. And if if you ever need uh, in the future to replicate this, just remember that you need uh, to specify an empty content. I don't know why, but if you don't provide an empty content, you will not get the token. So then Integromat has also some great features, uh, parsing the JSON, and uh, you can uh, uh, name some variables based on those values you got. And this is what I'm doing here. So here I'm uh, saving the token. And here I'm uh, parsing the JSON that I get from the web form. So here you can see my last uh, result. And you can see Integromat already parses everything that may be parsed. So you just have to choose what you need. So they, there's an indentation going there, but you don't even need to create a JSON parsing thing. And then what I'm, uh, I'm just running a script. I really like running scripts uh, when integrating with FileMaker instead of using the create records methods. So it's pretty simple. You just uh, copy paste the code from that API uh, documentation and I, I this is my script parameter which is the the object I created in this variable right here and last step just log out it's a it's a sessions method for that API needs a delete uh, call and that's it and then last part you need to respond to the web form that it was okay so of course, yes, you, you can uh, create some routing here to say if, uh, if it, it was not successful, uh, provide some kind of other answer, but for this session, I just uh, left it there. So let's go and uh, uh, enable that. So uh, I want all my scenarios. I just disabled that for now and enable that. So this is the active scenario that we'll be working. It's identical to the other one. Ah, one other thing I really like about uh, Integromat is that the uh, login node 
you can go in and you can copy that copy that module and paste it into another workflow. That's also something uh, Zapier, for example, doesn't have. So that's it from our backend. And let's go to FileMaker now. So it's, it's a plain, simple uh, solution. Uh, just, just one script, no comments, no time. <laughs> comments, gets a parameter, parses the JSON, creates a new record, set those fields, and that's it. So one thing is missing. And what's that? We did not map the web form to our web hook. So let's go through the options of the web form. Um, where is that? Okay, it's somewhere here. So you need to say, uh, you don't need to send email. This uh, web form is initially built to send emails. So you can say that I don't want to send email. You can custom, and this is what we need, the, the custom post URL. So I will just copy that webhook right here and go here set the link, paste it, that's it. It will now post all those fields based on those keys we specified right here, and the parsing will, uh, will be made in Integromat and following. So let's go through some other options that are here. You can... Uh, I think they have a REN implementation, implementation with, uh, yeah, they have with Google Sheets and you can, uh, you can also capture some uh, metadata info for your external uh, user. You can, uh, I have not tested what happens with attachments. And uh, in terms of functionality, they have uh, a lot of validation options. So you can set that to be required. There's a minimum length. And in the documentation, there is, a, there are, uh, there is uh, enough guidance to help you create a custom validation. And another cool thing they have is the CAPTCHA. Uh, this web form will, be, uh, will not be easily uh, spotted by robots, but uh, it's good to have a CAPTCHA because if you ever built a web form, you know how many uh, erroneous submissions you will get. I, I will not do that in this session because it requires to set up a CAPTCHA uh, with a CAPTCHA provider. So uh, that's it. This is our web form. Last step, you need to publish it. So uh, to save some time, I have created the same exact file. Let's save it just for in, in, in case we need it. And this is the exact same file I created for you. I, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, let me showcase that in, in my file. Yeah, you also need a button. <laughs> so uh, for alignment issues, I just use the three columns. This will align the button automatically how I want it. And I will just insert my button here and that's it. That's my web form. So I have already hosted that web form in um, pineapple.cr.fmp. And let's see what it does. So uh, John, Apple seed my message and uh, let's submit and that's it. You can also create a redirect when the, uh, the submission is done successfully and here's my record. So why I like this method because it's a low budget method. It, doesn't require uh, a big hardware for the web 
web server. So if you are, your client is mainly a file maker client that doesn't have any front end, any websites uh, that require functionality that will do the trick. And uh, yeah. And because I can build it myself, that's <laughs> one more reason I like it. So that's it. Uh, if you want to, we have 10 minutes. I assume you want to dig in into Integromat, but uh, let me know what you want to dig in. Very good presentation, Status. You liked it, Johan? This yeah. is uh, upon your request. <laughs> yeah, good. That's how this conference is supposed to work. You, we, we share our knowledge. So it's really good. I think it, uh, it, it's very easy as you described that and it shows where yeah, maybe Clarice Connect uh, should go to that it is so easy. And as you say, not so uh, massively expensive to just play around or, or you know, use it in the end. I mean, there, is, there are always use cases for cheap and more not so cheap uh, tools and maybe the others can do more, but this shows how easy it can be done. And yeah, that, that's why I, I think it's, it's definitely a good way. And um, it's a, a different way than uh, Johan's, uh, what Johan showed yesterday. But uh, in the end, it's, it's, yeah, it's great to see the different ways. Yeah, I, I'm really happy you liked it. Uh, so if you like, uh, in the eight minutes we got, uh, I would like to showcase how the how you can visualize in Integromat that call. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say that you want to troubleshoot what's happening in Integromat. You can click run once, and uh, let's create another one. So it will be uh, Fred so his message and submit. And now you can see in real time what happened. Oh. Yeah, and uh, step by step, you can see what, what was the payload. So here you can see exactly what your, uh, your web form responded. So mm -hmm. it, it already parses the, the keys. That's a nice thing to have. You can see the response of your uh, File maker server, this is your token. You can see everything. Here is the okay, here's the variable setting. That's not really important. It's pretty simple. And then you can see your uh, create record uh, script Whoa. and uh, the response from file maker. Record is missing, that's because I'm just using the get one record and perform script, and I don't care the that the record doesn't exist. And uh, this is the, the logout. And uh, this is the response. So it was successfully logged out. And, and that this is it. Yeah. That shows where, when an, uh, where an error occur occurred. That is, yeah, that's very neat, very nice. Yeah, when, when you, something doesn't work, it's really easy to troubleshoot what went wrong and uh, hmm. uh, let me showcase uh, if something goes wrong, what happens. Let me just change the password here. And let's create another submission. Oops, ah, it's Integromat. Let's submit our form again. Test, first, test, last, yes. And uh, run once, and let's see now. Oops, something's wrong. Ah, <laughs> actually it didn't, yeah, it did not identify the error. So you would need to create a routing option mm -hmm. here 
and uh, create your logic because you got an error here. So what you will do here, it would be unlink that. There we go. A little bit of right, those things. You can add a router. I think this is what they call the key statement. Uh, no, maybe they change the name. No. Um, maybe it's ah, it's flow control. Okay. A router. So you can say here that if if the result here is a success, so you can say that my status code uh, equal to zero, then uh, can I combine somehow? Or maybe just, okay, maybe I need to, I just create a, a random variable here. Don't care. Uh, actually, you you would just connect it to this node, and my uh, error result, which is what happened, condition would be the status code for one, and then uh, webhooks response. Uh, let's respond error. I wonder if it will show in the web form error uh, logging in Okay. And uh, let's see now. So I need to find out what's mm, yeah what's a, a good error. I know Just, that if if you don't have anything, I know for sure that this mm. will provide an error. But that's it, more or less. Two more tools in your toolbox: uh, the one from that developer development, and the other is uh, API service. Yeah. Thank you for your time.